Episode of Collider Jedi Council. I'm Christian Harloff, aka Darth Harloff, and this is our Star Wars show. Everything in the world of Star Wars, we talk about it, and we destroyed the whole entire council. It's just myself <laughs> and Obi John Kenobi, John Campia. They mysteriously disappeared. I turned him to the <laughs> dark side. There was some disagreement, and then Mark mysteriously disappeared. Yeah, it's just us in here today, but it doesn't matter because. Today is just like any other day. Christian and I are going to talk about Star Wars. We just might as well do it on camera. And we'll probably fight about it. And we'll probably <laughs> argue about it, yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's what we're going to do today. It'll be, it'll be a shorter but sweet episode of Jedi Council today. And we will start with the Star Wars movie news. Everything in the world of the movies we will talk about. This could be episode 7, 8, 9, Rogue One, Young Han Solo. Who the hell knows what's coming out after that, but we'll talk about it when we hear about it. Okay, now the first... Uh, story today possible character reveals for Rogue One this comes in again thank you to Star Wars Newsnet who puts together all these stories they have their own stories that they do it's it's a great site if you're not checking it out you should um, all right, so these are all possible rumors as well, too. The if This is from Toy Arc yak, via Yak Face. Rogue One <laughs> 6 Black Series were shown. Main heroine, main antagonist, who apparently looks like Admiral Thrawn, but without the blue skin. Uh, and then there is a Rogue One vehicle, a starfighter, a new kind of TIE fighter. And there was also apparently a ship that looked like Boba Fett's as well. Uh, now, out of hearing these rumors and... Uh, the one thing is that everyone's thinking that there's a possibility now that Ben Mendelsohn could play this Admiral Thrawn character. Right. Type character, whatever. This is starting to become something that is becoming a little bit more realistic. And I know that you and I have been hoping and praying oh my God, that yes. Admiral Thrawn or some kind of... Please. Yeah, some kind of vision of him will appear. There's another story we're going to talk about a little later in the show today, but now with this, with the possibility of the tease and aftermath, the Chuck Wending book, um, this might happen, and Ben Mendelsohn might be the guy. Now, is it definite? No, not at all, but mm. if it is, if Ben Mendelsohn is the version of Admiral Thrawn, hell yes. Here's the thing. <laughs> that, it's just the way you just you described it, right? Like it's, it's, it's Grand Admiral Thrawn without the blue skin. That's kind of like saying it's Professor Charles Xavier, but think of him looking like Slash from Guns N' Roses. Right. It like it's like the blue skin is kind of a big deal. I mean, that's that's kind of a, like so. Could it be more of a Grand Admiral Thrawn like character? Right. Uh, like a brilliant strategician who can come in and do all that. Absolutely, because unfortunately, a lot of people aren't like you and I. Even in the Star Wars fan community, a lot of people are like you and I that. They don't know Grand Admiral Thrawn, right. which is so maybe they think, let's bring that type of a character in. But, oh, my God, if it's Grand Admiral Thrawn. And by the way, I, I'm saying, you know, blue skin is kind of a key thing to who he is. You do Grand Admiral Thrawn, I will forgive pink skin. Right. I will totally forgive right. it. You don't even have to have his eyes red. I'm right. fine. Don't put one of those stupid, dumb Yasilamari or however they pronounce them, hanging around. Don't need that at all. If you're going to do Grand Admiral Thrawn, I don't care if you change his look. That's totally cool. I, I'm still pessimistic. Maybe it's just because I don't want to get my hopes up. Right. But I feel pessimistic that they're actually going to go in that direction. Maybe it's like a Grand Admiral Thrawn type character. The Slave One yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna get into that as well too, because I'll tell you exactly how that happened. Yes. But I just want real, one real thing again, one more thing on um, on Mendelssohn and Thrawn, and like you said, I think it's very possible if they don't do the blue skin and they don't even call him Thrawn, but it's someone like it's that, a Thrawn type character, someone right? like that, and developing him. Look, there's a lot of great characteristics of that character. I don't understand why you wouldn't just make him Thrawn if you can make him Thrawn, yeah. but if you don't, you don't, and he's still pretty cool. And what better actor than Ben Mendelsohn to do it? Question is, is he going to voice him in Rebels? Um, if, if well, that's another issue. That's another. Oh, issue but that, what if it's a character named like Admiral Hux, like his dad or something? Like, like his dad or something. Yeah. You know what the, my coolest thing is about Grand Admiral Thrawn? Because you guys probably hear us go on and on about how much we love Thrawn all the time. But honestly, one of the things that I, I reading the book and I like the character. He was a Star Wars villain. Loved art. This that's the thing that made me go crazy for this character. I've never seen that before. You know how Grand Admiral Thrawn would defeat his enemies of different worlds. 
he would first study the art of that world. And yeah. by studying the art of that world, the art and culture of the world, that's how he would figure out how to defeat them. Yeah. And it's like, that is something I'd never seen in a fictional villain before. That's how they introduce him. Yeah, and he's so cerebral, yeah. and it's just made him terrifying in yeah. that way. So, oh. Well, that's what see, that's the thing what Timothy Don, Zahn did so well is he was the first guy to go, okay, how are you going to top the emperor? I'll show you how. And he did it. Yeah, and he did it. He made a, a a guy who wasn't even strong in the force made him terrifying. So let's hope we get a version of him. That'd now, be awesome. Now moving on to the next story, which John just mentioned as well too. And I mentioned briefly in that story was that is Rogue One going to be actual? Is actually the Rogue One is that a ship? That's a rumor right now. And is Boba Fett sh not only is his ship, but is Boba Fett himself in? Rogue One. Um, okay, so Lego showcased some of their upcoming Star Wars sets during the Nuremberg Toy Fair and gave a sneak peek at what we could expect from the company in the future. One particular image got the attention of everyone, the Rogue One line. Rogue One, October, there are two different ideas that this image suggests here. This is what they say at uh, Star Wars News Net, that they're either going to see Slave One and Boba Fett in the movie, or we're going to see a very similar ship um, very, very similar to the model in question is classified in canon as a fire spray 31 class patrol and attack craft. And given that Pope Boba Fett is presumably going to get a Star Wars anthology film, that's still debatable. Uh, the latter seems a little bit more plausible. And with it comes an interesting little detail that some could overlook. Uh, and so there's some more stuff in regards to the ship. Uh, but yeah, so whether or not that the Rogue One, that, that sounds like a ship. Rogue One. Not, it's not just. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a call sign. I know that we're, we're thinking it's a call sign, um, but I think it, it's absolutely that it could be a ship. And I think that Boba Fett. The reason why I think it's possible that we see Boba Fett in this movie was because of something we talked about on Movie Talk when we were AMC Movie Talk, and that was bounty hunters are going to steal the yeah, plans, yeah, and yeah, bounty yeah. hunters are going to help. Uh, who's to say that's not the case still? That was the initial thing that that was going to happen. We heard bounty hunters were going to get the plans of the Death Star, and then we heard, oh, it's about the plans, finding the plans of the Death Star, and the bounty hunters just kind of disappeared. What if? Yeah, I mean, no, I, I like this idea. And look, I'm going to go one step further. I don't know that... I'm going to bet that Rogue One isn't the name of a ship. Very well could be. It fits. It totally fits, yeah. and I'm not going to be surprised if it is. Um, but I'm also with you. I don't necessarily think it's just a call sign. I'm starting to think Rogue One is actually the embodiment. It's a person. I think Rogue One is a person. Maybe the person who steals the, yeah. the plants. Yeah, or or maybe it's our lead character, or maybe it's not. Yeah. Now, when I first saw this image, going back to you know the slave, I when I first saw that image, I did not think that was Boba Fett's ship. I I didn't think it looked enough like it. And then somebody started putting up the comparison shots, and I'm and I'll go so far as to say this: when I now look at the comparison shots of the image of the toy versus the image of like Boba Fett's ship. I'm like, okay, I can see how somebody would see that and see the similarities. Yeah. To me, I still think there's too many differences myself, but I wouldn't argue with somebody to tell them they're wrong if they think it is because I can totally see it. Yeah. I can see the similarities. And if they do, look, I am all for Boba Fett being in the new Star Wars movies. You know, I've got my apprehensions about a Boba Fett standalone movie. But him movie. in the movies. But him I'm in a you. movie like yeah. this? Yeah. This is ideal. This is perfect. But yeah. then some people say, oh, but Boba Fett's a bad guy. No, he ain't. He's amoral. A He's gun. a bounty yeah. hunter for hire. You got the money? I'll do your job. You want me to save that kitten out of the tree? Pay me and I'll do it. You want me to kill that kitten in the tree? Pay me the money and I'll do it. Right. That's Boba Fett. And if they bring him into a movie like this in this kind of way... I almost swore. Damn, yeah, yeah. that would be really, well, the, really good. The only problem, though, the only problem with putting him in, because, like you said, is it's it's the canon now. Because in the canon, in the comic yeah. books, he is established as really working with Vader a lot. And this is, granted, post-episode four, a lot of the stuff that we've seen. Yes. But he's the one that kind of discovers Luke Skywalker and then he almost even re and reveals to Vader kind of his true nature and, and some more stuff like he he fights Luke Skywalker like there's a lot of stuff and that's not to go against what you just said as far mm -hmm. as he's absolutely a hired gun it's true um, and maybe it's the fact that Vader saw what he did um, working with the rebels to get the, the plans and, and then started to work with him or he just never knew about it and yeah. then, so there's it's certainly possible so I, I don't know as long as they are just conscious of what they've set up in the new canon as well.
Totally agree. All right, next story here. This one comes from Making Star Wars, and what I would also tell you guys is that this could be a potential spoiler. So if you don't want to know, fast forward about, I'd say, five, maybe seven minutes in, and this is just a couple reveals about possibly who Forrest Whitaker could be. We've heard virtually nothing from him so yeah make or his, anybody <laughs> yep yeah, but with but again even with ben Mendelssohn, with maybe he's maybe he's tarkin maybe he's he's an imperial i mean you've heard nothing from this guy Not, you know as far as uh felicity jones you've seen pictures nothing from forest Ewok. <laughs> Take it to the bank. He's not an Ewok. Ewok. Not an Ewok. But here's what Making Star Wars says. They say that it appears that he has one leg and uses a cane as a crutch to walk. Early reports made it seem like he, ha he might have one leg, but the clarification of the topic is a robot leg. He appears to be a veteran of some battles. It's not clear if he lost his leg fighting in the Clone Wars or lost it or against the Empire. So he's Anakin's stepdad. Maybe. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. Based on uh, differentiated code name from the rest of the rebels in the movie, it appears he is likely good, but maybe a bounty hunter affiliated type. He has a cape, oh. and his costume is a hodgepodge of different things. Think of someone you might see at Maz's castle. The thing I take away is the same thing that, that caused that reaction out of you, the bounty hunter thing, because it goes yeah. back right into what we just said in regards to Boba Fett and regards to the idea that we were talking about bounty hunters doing this in the first place. Maybe he was another, he was a type bounty hunter. Maybe he knows Boba Fett. Maybe he's competing against Boba Fett to get this job mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So I like the idea of him playing that. Does that face alone, what Ray did there, uh, that, that grizzled <laughs> face. He's a guy that's seen it before. I happen to, I, I kind of hope that he had, that I want to hear some Clone Wars references. I mean, that he fought in the Clone Wars. I want to see, that's, that brings up another point that I want to hear more about the history, even though we're going back in, in time yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I still want to hear about before again in this movie, so you set up some time. But what do you think about these rumors? You know, here's the thing. I I think like a lot of people, when I first heard Forrest Whitaker's first Academy Award winner, Forrest Whitaker, I mean, right. talent out his ears. Like I think, like a lot of people, my first assumption was a benevolent a rebel leader, or you know, one of the founders of the rebellion. He would be one of the Mon Mothma types, standing in the back, pointing his finger like a general, saying "Charge!" But the thing about Forrest Whitaker is, he has now a lot of great actors, like a Leonardo DiCaprio, are artistic actors. Man, they can chameleon themselves in almost anything. That's great. But then you get some actors who have a real powerful presence. Yeah. I think of a Tom Hardy. I think of a Denzel Washington. I think of a Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. When Forrest Whitaker wants to own a screen, he can come across as intimidating and powerful. I hate ever mentioning the movie Battlefield Earth, mm -hmm. but even in that yeah. pile of dung, <laughs> he stands out when he wants to be. And he endearing. Can, yeah, all the same time. So you take that type of dude and blend that with a rumor like, say, him being a, a bounty hunter. Yeah. At first you go, no, no, come on. Then you go, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. That would actually kick all kinds of ass. Yeah. So sign me up. I am all on board for Forrest Whitaker being a bounty hunter in the Star Wars universe. I think it would be awesome. What I liked him recently, I know that you and I felt different about the movie, but I, what I liked him in was, was Southpaw as well too because of the what he was his in, performance was great that's what i mean like yeah. because he's he was a guy that just again reminds me of what the description here is that that's seen it all has been there before maybe gives him some some advice um but has been grizzled because he can he can play that authoritative figure as well but i don't know if you necessarily need him to do that in this movie so i like the rumors that i'm hearing yeah me too okay all right next story bums me out a bit uh oh bums me out a bit there, so Entertainment Weekly talked to Marianne Brando and Mary Jo Markey, who are the editors of Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, and they confirmed that Frank Oz had reprised his role as Yoda for a cameo in Episode Seven, a full-fledged cameo, not just voices, what? and it was cut from the film. Madness. This is what they say. There was one point when we were actually thinking of having Yoda in the film, and then we decided not to. Brandon told E.T. at the 66th Annual Ace, Ace Awards, uh, Frank Oz came in for a day and did a whole bunch of Yoda, and he was over the moon to do it, and we were tickled pink. Then it was wrapped. They didn't say why, why, why they cut it, but maybe they show it in the Blu-ray. I don't know. But what was the scene? What happened? I think there was some rumors that apparently he... Oh, this is okay. Wait. So back when the movie was wrapping up production, one of our own, one of the Star Wars uh, news nets informants told them that there was apparently a scene of Yoda talking with Luke about serious matters. And another source claimed that there would be new dialogue for Yoda in the film. I think this adds so much. If this is, if this is true... 
that he was talking to Luke again, like him and Luke are hanging out on that island, or he's still in contact with Luke. If that's the case, I think it's almost guaranteed that he's going to pop up in episode eight. I think that they were thinking about using him then, and the fact that Luke's still able to communicate. And I think we've always been talking, will we eventually see Force Ghosts? And I think we've all said that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in eight. in eight. Yoda's coming back in eight after hearing this story. I got to say, I'm glad he wasn't in seven. I'm glad he wasn't. Yeah. But but even though I'm saying I'm glad he wasn't in seven, yeah. picture this with me. Do this. All right. So it's coming near the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Han and or Han. Uh, Han's dead. Uh, Chewie and Ray have landed on the planet. Ray's now walking up the steps. She's, she's out looking for Luke, Luke, and she comes over that little ridge, and she sees the back of Luke with the head up. And his head's kind of tilted down like this. And just for a second before it vanishes just into mist, just for a second you could have swore you saw the glowy yeah. outlining force ghost. Luke and Yoda were actually standing there talking for a second. Then he just disappears. And then Luke turns around. It'd be amazing. Come yeah. on. And we know. Come on. Yeah. That would have been pretty damn good. And we know that she's not. When she went through that vision, that force vision, we know that Yoda says something up top we know that obi-wan says something up top so we we assume that and this isn't just like her dreaming these are the four spirits talking to her like encouraging her. well no and i'll go as far as to say this too um i have not felt the need to have yoda in the new trilogy nor have i felt the desire to have him in the new trilogy mm -hmm. and i didn't think they would this puts me on your train yeah. you're right I, I mean if they were doing that for seven i think you are absolutely 100 percent right to me now, it's a foregone He's conclusion. Coming back. He's coming back. Yeah. We're going to see Yoda probably in eight. I think so too. Because think about that. If you're if, as a fan, as a fan, and you see Force Ghost Yoda, all right, okay. I don't need him jumping around and flipping like he did against Dooku. I just need him giving some advice. I do. You want you want to see Force Ghost Yoda? I'm, fighting we're not going to see a lightsaber fight with Force Ghost. No, I'm just saying it would make tickle me a little it bit. It would probably. be fun. It would be great though to have him whether he's giving advice to Luke or maybe, you know, coming in and having a conversation with, because look, and it also, it, I could see the conversation like happen. Why are we not going to use Yoda, Yoda and seven? Well, we're kind of paralleling new hope. If we're going to parallel um, empire a little bit here in eight, Yoda Which is makes, when Ben makes his first ghost appearance. And that's when Yoda appears. Yeah. First time is in episode five. Yep. So, okay. Uh, moving on, some episode eight news. This comes, uh, apparently, update, uh, excuse me, Ryan Johnson is at Pinewood Studios. Apparently, the script is ready and the filming should be getting soon. Uh, look, Daisy Ridley had posted some photos that the script was sent to her Anthony Daniels joked around and, and yapped too much about it. He said, just read episode eight and thought I'd share the story with you because I know you can't wait to hear about it. You you do want to hear it, don't you? And then Ryan Johnson tweeted out a picture of Han Solo putting his hand over C-3PO's mouth. Um, <laughs> John Boyega... Clearly choreographed, but that's great. Yes. I love that. John Boyega said that he's already training for the role in the movie. Did you movie. see the pictures? Uh, no, I have not seen the pictures. Is he the, Jack? Yeah, there, there are some pictures... Um, this says Finn is back. It's okay. a play on words because it's a picture from behind John Boyega right. working out his back. Mm -hmm. And uh, Boy has put on some muscle. He's packed on some muscle. Yeah. He's packed on some muscle. Um, so, yeah, then Ryan Johnson is on set. This is, this is n not shocking news. This is this is much. <clears throat> This is happy news. This is news that we expected to hear pretty soon, and it's with with the delays and stuff too. And I, I haven't heard any more about that uh, the strike or anything too. So maybe they settled that. I have no idea, but it seems like they're going. They're, they're all at Pinewood. They're getting ready to go, and and I'm excited. It's it's it goes back to that word I use all the time, and it's the tangibilization. Yes, we knew it was coming. Right. We know it's coming, but it's when these little pictures start coming out, and mm -hmm. you see them on set, and it's like, holy crap, it's real. Because here's the thing: as much as we've talked about it and celebrated it and been overjoyed about it, right. the reality is, even when the prequels came out or the original trilogy, we're used to waiting three years in between these movies. You know, we've waited yeah. 15, 20 years yeah. for, for new ones to come, and it's like, whoo! Well, I mean. Star Wars The Force Awakens is still across the street in theater mm -hmm. right now. Right. And now we're sitting down looking at pictures of them walking on set recording eight. I know. Because it's and coming. we're getting another movie this year. And we're getting another one in like 10 months. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the tangibilization of that reality. I am still living in this Star Wars' back glow yeah. that I should be over by now, but I'm not. And just seeing pictures like this just kind of excites me. And it's funny, you know, hearing you say that, too. Obviously, we're super excited for Rogue One. I think it's both our number yeah. one as far as the one we're looking forward to the most this year. But the thing is, people are, because they were so caught up in episode seven, and they were like, oh, two years before we get it back. It's like, 
you're getting another one. Dude, it is crazy. So soon, and it's also because it's showing people did not know enough about what Rogue One is. The, 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 to, the fan, like not even just a Star Wars fan base, but the, the just a casual movie fan who was who liked Episode Seven. Right, it's like ah, oh, I gotta wait a little bit to get uh, episode eight. It's like yeah, but you're gonna get, you're gonna be right back in a Star Wars again, and then when that's over, you only have to wait a year for episode eight. Yeah, and that's what the crazy thing about this. I can't remember if this is in the notes. The Super Bowl stuff is in the notes or not? But I mean, we were talking at Movie Talk the other day, right? And the issue came up of them saying there's not going to be a Rogue One trailer at the Super Bowl, and I kind of said. Yeah, that's fine. The movie's still way far away. And Mark, I mean, I, I got a phone call from hell. It is apparently frozen over because Mark changed my mind. Uh, Mark is what Mark said to me. He was like, yeah, but John, think about this. As much as we're in the loop on Rogue One, we're all talking about in our circles. There's actually a lot of movie goes out there. A lot of people who went to go see Star Wars Episode Seven that actually are still completely oblivious to the fact totally. that there's a Rogue One coming yeah. out. And that still kind of blows my mind, but they're right. I think they need to get moving. I still think they're going to show. And that was, and again, you know how much I love Star Wars News Net. That was just a tweet that they tweeted out. They, that, was their, that was their opinion that they don't think they're getting it. I disagree with them. I do think we're getting. No, it actually came from a source. No, I, and it didn't I, I read. I read the tweet. I read it to Mark because Mark and I talked about right, it last right. night. Because Mark told me about it, and I was looking forward to, for an actual story to put it in the notes. And I went back, and it was just on their Twitter. They say they they have someone that that says they're not getting it. I still think we're getting a, 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 a little teaser. I think it teaser. would be such a missed opportunity because look. For Star Wars Episode Seven, you put out the first teaser a year in advance. Now, granted, it was the grand re-entrance of Star right. Wars, I understand. Right. And granted, we are still 10 months away. But the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of people saw Seven that still don't know this Rogue One's coming out. It is the Super Bowl, for heaven's sakes. You're right. never going to get more bang for your buck to you know, have a coming out party, if you will, for Rogue One. Now is the time to do it. I think it will be a missed opportunity for Disney if they do not take advantage of this. I agree with you 99%. However, the little the the one percent I don't is because I can understand the argument of this. Disney might say we're going to have time to promote Star Wars, even if the people still who don't ten know, months because what they do need to promote is the Jungle Book, which comes out in April and Civil War and what's, what's Doctor it? Strange. That's November though too. I know, but still so they before. have three other well, big films. That, Rogue that, that goes to your point. You're right? absolutely right. They and, got three other big films before Star Wars. That's a really valid, very valid and, point. And two out of the three that we just mentioned there are not well known by the by the. Uh, yep. Even though Jungle Book is known by people, but the, the live action, a lot of people don't know. Live. I was action in version. an Uber car today. Asked me what I was doing. Blah blah. What are good movies? I said look for the Jungle Book. He goes, "There's another Jungle Book movie. Right. There's a Jungle Book." So you're absolutely right. I mean, there are a lot of films they still got to push and promote. So They're coming out before Star Wars. That's what I'm saying. So I can yeah. understand if it turns out that they're not doing it, but I also think that it is, going off Mark's point, a great time for them to go, hey, by the way, yep. Star Wars is still there. Ten months away, folks. Right. Ten months away. All right, now to our next story, we touched on this a little bit too, is that John Boyega is training, he's training for sword fighting in episode eight. Now here's a picture of him. He, okay, so while oh, sorry, let me get to the top of this story here. So while Finn's use of a lightsaber in the ad campaign leading up to the release of Star Wars Episode Seven, The Force Awakens, led many to believe that he would become Jedi of the movie. The movie ended up showing that Rey would take that role instead. However, recent Instagram posts by John Boyega implies that he's practicing up on his fencing skills and that he'll be wielding the lightsaber again in Episode Eight. This is a bit shocking to me um, because. I mean, there's a couple of things. The one is that people were kept asking about how he, when once the Hosnian system was 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 blown up, and and he kind of sensed this, the yelling and the screaming, is that no one really talked about that, and that it was. I mean, he's force sensitive, and then he still kind of held his own for a little bit until Kylo Ren slashed his back off. Um, he was still doing okay, and he picked up he picked up the lightsaber pretty quick. I still thought he was going to be more blaster guy. I thought him and Poe would be the resistance, and I didn't see him sword fighting. Now, that's not to say he's just going to be lightsaber fighting. Maybe he picks up one of those baton things. <laughs> he's fighting one of those. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you feel about it? Well, I mean, I th think about this, too. Like, what I believe, I, I hate it when people object to the fact that Finn was able to fight uh, Kylo Ren. Great. Okay, first of all, watch it again. He didn't really fight him. No. He landed one lucky shot. And he was already wrecked from Chewie yep. shooting yeah, him. And, that's and, the yeah. other thing. He landed one lucky shot in that thing. The all rest of that fight 
was Kylo pretty much bitch slapping him around. Now, and then you got to remind people that bowcaster of Chewie's that was sending stormtroopers flying 20 feet when they got hit. He just got shot with that and was pretty much dying on the right. spot. And what the movie also introduced us to throughout is that these stormtroopers are not just blaster trained, much better than the original trilogy, right. but they're melee combat trained. Right. You know, so he wasn't just picking up a lightsaber, oh, for the first time. No, no, he's melee combat trained. We saw that with, what's, I can't remember what the fans have named that stormtrooper. Well, no, 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 he, something, no but something. he actually, yeah, but that's, uh, that's uh, wasn't it Reds? Or Force. Force? From, he actually yeah he, something for he, that's actually they gave him a name yeah. so like well so we see that they are trained in melee combat with that so putting all that together now in the Star Wars role playing game which I desperately keep <laughs> referencing all the time they introduce something which is canon now in Star Wars not because it was in the role playing game but they've introduced it in canon stuff there was something they introduced there called vibro blades which weren't lightsabers right. per se right but they were sword like weapons that you could use and so, Grievous's boys used those in the Clone Wars yes yeah. they did yeah. so I'm I'm not going to be surprised at all if what he's training for is not because where is he going to get a lightsaber from the one that was around right. he gave back to right. ray so i got a feeling you're going to see something like a vibro blade something along those lines that he's probably going to see a lot of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat with yeah uh okay so moving on now dennis if we can get away from this last story and just go into our our new um our next segment which is simply called What's the deal with canon? Everything in the world of canon in Star Wars we talk about. We talk about the books. We talk about the games, the comics, anything that links back into the movies. Now, the first story I'm going to actually talk about is not something that was even in the show notes today. Because this came out a little later. We're getting some information about what Claudia Gray's bloodline is all about. Oh, This came out tell. today. I have not heard this I know, yet. I know. I was going to save it for you. Um, so, okay. Star Wars Bloodline by Claudia Gray. This is from USA Today. Um, apparently, they, they spoke to Claudia, and, and here is what she said. This is from USA Today. Leia, played by Carrie Fisher in the movies, is professionally at a good place as a senator and a leader in a peaceful new republic decades after the fall of Vader and the Emperor's stranglehold on the galaxy. However, Gray says that... In, that a new generation doesn't remember the lessons of the rebellion or recognize the wrongs of the empire, and Leia begins to see the cracks in the foundation that could lead to a dangerous future for the galaxy. Family is a major theme overall in the Star Wars films, and it plays a key role in one of the book's most significant events, one that has pretty far-reaching repercussions for several characters, Gray says. However, this novel isn't fundamentally about Leia as a wife, sister, or mom. This is about the role that she's created for herself since the fall of the Empire and the one she takes up by the time of The Force Awakens. Some characters from the recent films make an appearance in Bloodline. Though Grey is introducing a lot of new players, the most important is Ransom Castorfo, a guy Grey describes as an ambitious young senator who's lay, who lays political opposite in virtually every way. He even collects artifacts from the Empire, like pro-Palpatine banners, pieces of armor, and so on. Gray sets the scene for the excerpt with Leia as one of the guests as an early morning meeting that may seem to be one more day in politics, but is actually to, take, to talk over a critical situation about the galaxy's future. She thinks this will be another day of policy discussions until she receives an ominous warning. Uh, the novel is scheduled for a release on May 3rd, 2016. Nice. You hear this? What do you think? It sounds like trash you're bullshit i'm in bullshit yeah. Yeah. that's this sounds great that sounds yeah. great yeah, i'm, sounds I'm great. all on board for that because you hear bloodlines is like we start we we theorize well the title is probably a giveaway of some point i look i i was not a fan of that leia comic no, I mean, that we got know. yeah and it actually left me wanting something better yeah and the job claudia gray i know we go on it all the times well what she did with lost stars cannot be undersold i mean you cannot underhype it it's it's so good it was just so good she captured the essence and the spirit of star wars even princess leia's appearance in the book felt right yeah and to hear that she's going to now take on that character and really flesh that out. Years later now. Years later, yeah. decades later. And we're, that's good, because a lot of fans have been asking for a little bit more cartilage between Return of the Jedi and Episode 7. This is a great way to yeah. do it. I'm super stoked. I've been wondering what she was going to give us. This excites me. I am super excited for this for so many different reasons. And one, you got to remember that Claudia Gray, for the most part, I know there are people who are fans of her books, as far as Star Wars fans, she came out of obscurity. 
No, like, out of nowhere. Out of completely out of nowhere. nowhere. Like I'd never heard of her before. I, never, I mean, and then once you do some research of the thing, and they were under marketing that book because everything was about aftermath, 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 well, aftermath. It wasn't a Delray book. I never even heard of it. Right. And then you introduced me to it. Yeah. Like there's another Star Wars book. Oh, and it was, right. They didn't even Delray books didn't even get her. They didn't no. even have her. It was just Lucasfilm publishing. And then because I believe, or maybe they maybe they read it beforehand before it came out and said, "Whoa, we need to lock her up," and they did, and they gave her this. That shows you how much confidence and what they thought of Lost Stars yes. because you've given her this story like this is a story yep. man this is one of the best canon stories that we've heard about so far because it does bring in those events this is the first post release you know since uh, of, of yep. episode 7 of the book that we're getting and 6 years before The Force Awakens you're gonna Ben Solo's gonna be in this book in one yeah. way or another, Ben Solo, now whether or not he's Ben or Kylo at this point, we don't know. We're going to hear about her because if it's about Leia, you're going to have to hear and even mention with wife and, and all that stuff too, where she's at with Han. We'll know how many years it was before. Did Han take off by this part? Is he still around six years beforehand? There is so much, and we know that she's good with those types of relationships. We know that she knows Star Wars. This is a perfect story for Claudia Gray. Get me this novel tomorrow. Yeah, I can't. I, I, I've, I never. I'm not the type of guy who's like, oh, get us advanced copies. I'm right. totally. I'm always usually really good. Let's like, wait till it comes out. I am going to be so blowing up some people's phones trying yeah. to get an advanced copy of this because I cannot wait to I read it. Cannot wait. Okay, so that's that's that one. Now our next story in the canon is that there is a character who apparently might make an appearance in Rebels season three. That person is someone that we were talking about, and that is Grand Admiral. Thrawn. Um, this is again coming from Making Star Wars. They say that they've heard that in season three of Star Wars Rebels that we will be introduced to none other than the original blue guy himself, Grand Admiral Thrawn from Heir of the Empire. From the sound of things, we're going to see Thrawn as the tactical genius of the starship warfare. He was to be in the expanded universe. However, this time he will be using his evil brand of genius against the heroes of the, of the starship Ghost. The future of Star Wars Rebels will feature Ezra with a short haircut and a lightsaber, similar to Obi-Wan, Luke, Jedi, Saber, as well as the fiercest Chiss in the Empire. It sounds like the timeline moves a lot closer to A New Hope, and Ezra's design will reflect that. Now, this is interesting to the previous story. Yeah. Previous story saying that guy didn't have blue skin. Well, it could be a different character altogether. Yeah. But if you're going to introduce Thrawn in Rebels, then you and if you're getting closer to New Hope, then why not put him in, in, in Rogue One? Um, I happen to think... More so in Rebels that we're going to see this guy. I think it's going to happen. And again, I'm, I'm putting a lot of, uh, of weight because it's making Star Wars and they've, they have really proven to be accurate. Yeah. So what do you think? Okay, you know me. These, these rumors about a character is going to come. Be, I, I take all of them with giant grains yeah. of salt. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I'm finding myself completely buying into this. And the, and the fact that I'm buying into this, that I do believe you're going to see Thrawn show up in Rebels, and I do kind of feel like Thrawn is the type of character that a lot of people don't know. Rebels is the perfect place to kind of introduce perfect him. Perfect place. To, to people who never read the Thrawn yeah. trilogy, right? It's also the reason why I'm very pessimistic about when they're talking about Rogue One, that it being Thrawn, because they're going to bring him in here. You're probably going to see him as a Chiss. You're going to see yeah. him with the blue skin, the red eyes, all that kind of stuff. And if what they're talking about Rogue One is non-blue skin, that means a different guy, whatever. I am buying this, actually. I believe we are going to see Thrawn here. He'd be a great addition to it. He'd be a great foil yeah. for our heroes in that story. And I actually think, even though I'm always, you know me, I'm a movie guy first. Right. Move, best stuff in the movies, best stuff in the movies. But even I got to say, the right place to introduce Thawne would be Rebel, so I'm buying this. And you know why? The other reason I really like it, I think there are two characters that have appeared in the animation that are the first two choices that I think, or not, not Thrawn being one of them because he hasn't appeared yet, but it, let's say he's in Rebels, right? right? So assuming he's in Rebels, that character and Cad Bane, are the two characters that were in animation right. that would really serve well in film. Because I would prefer to see if they, if they introduce Thrawn, then to make him, obviously, you have to to fit canon, make him a chiss, do it, and, and let, and let uh, Ben Mendelsohn play him. That would be incredible to oh. see that. It would also be incredible to see him, the, Mendelsohn play Cad Bane. So yeah. either one of those guys, I think they, they transfer really well to film. I love the idea of Thrawn coming to three, because it also shows... 
three is going to it, this series is different it's going to continue to get dark it can't be the setup to where the original trilogy was a you know empire's a dark one and then jedi is kind of happy with the ewok dance at the end that's not going to happen with this show it, it just it can't it can't <laughs> it just can't um so and and we're going to talk about the are we going to talk about it? Oh, shoot. You know what? I didn't put it in there. So we might as well just talk. Oh, no, no, no. no. It's in there. Sorry. But we're going to talk about the review of the, the latest episode of Rebels. Did you watch right. it yet? I did. You did. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a second. So I, I have my prediction on who I think the first Rebels character to go is. And we'll talk about that in just oh, a second. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about Thrawn. Obviously, John is. Are you guys, even if you don't know, who Thrawn is, and you're watching this show, you certainly heard us talk a lot about him. Do you want to see him in Rogue One? Do you want to see him in Rebels? Or do you not give a crap and you don't care if you ever see the blue guy ever? Um, okay, so moving on to our next story. It's comic review. Obi-Wan and Anakin, the latest issue, number two. This came out yesterday. I read it, and I'm digging this comic. I am because of what the relationship is with Obi-Wan and oh yeah we've seen it I know a lot of the thing well we've kind of we've been there before this is like post Clone Wars and you know this relationship what I like about it is is again showing that dynamic of what I heard Obi-Wan talk about in episode four of and he was a great friend like mm. all that stuff that's starting to come to play in this comic and also you see how he's listening to Obi-Wan and how he's learning from Obi-Wan but it also is a great scene with him and Palpatine in this in this mm. issue and it's 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 again just the way that Palpatine was preying on this kid since episode one he's just preying on him and, and manipulating him and, and teaching him without him realizing he's being taught it's a great scene for that and there's you know there's just another little side mission that they're going on but it's 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 the stuff when they flash back on a chorus on and I really liked and I think that the art's really good and, and I'm enjoying where it's going so I I recommend especially if you're a Clone Wars fan and, and you like the relationship of of Obi-Wan and, and seeing Anakin before he, he went to the dark side I would uh, suggest reading Obi-Wan and Anakin Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now moving on. We just talked about it. Rebels, the latest uh, episode, Legends of Lasat, came out. Myself and David Griffin talked about it on the Rebels sh after show. You can watch that whole episode. We were there. John was not able to make it. Um, so I wanted to get your opinion on it. What did you think of the episode? It's a very weird one for me because yeah. it's one of those ones where I didn't actually like the story of the episode. But I really enjoyed the episode. Yeah. I, I, I know. I, I, I know exactly you're what you're saying. You're sitting at home going, how can that be? No. I, I know what you mean. I don't know how to explain it. The The whole thing is like, oh, we just happened to stumble upon this kid. It's the prophecy. Really? No one ever talked about the prophecy before? Okay, whatever. Um, so, well, I didn't dig the story, mm -hmm. but I dug the episode. I love that we really got a really good look at you know characters that we don't normally get to focus on right. a whole lot. Um, I, I like the fact that you know, there seem to be some wormhole traveling and stuff like that. I like that they mentioned wild space because mm -hmm. I don't know that they've mentioned that in Rebels yet is the beyond the outer rim, right. like the, the wild space that lies beyond there. I thought that was very interesting because I believe wild space was first introduced in extended universe yeah, stuff. So, so that's actually kind of cool that they've brought that in there. I like that. You know, I like any episode that's got Callus in it. So yeah. I like seeing him point uh, point out the action felt good. The, the interactions felt really good. And I think I know where you're going. But I, I got to say, again, I didn't like the the story, but I still ended up liking the episode a lot. I did too. And the, the episode actually reminded me. Uh, I said this yesterday. It reminded me of Battlestar Galactica. The music. It very much did. Yeah, yes. The music sounded like Battlestar Galactica. The stuff that they did at the end. And I found myself for the first part of it going ah. I don't know. I mean, I get it. I'm glad that Zeb's getting some screen time here and that this is his episode and we're learning a little bit more about him and what exactly happened to him and his position before he went off uh, running. But then that ending happens. And when he steps up, puts that thing in, yeah. and but when Kanan and Ezra put his hand yeah. on, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Like, it was like they were helping out his friend. They, they were tuning into the force. Everything that they did there, all that happened. But my prediction is that Zeb's the first to go. I knew you were going there. His story's told. His, they, they told a lot of his story in this episode, a lot of his backstory, like Kanan, Ezra, Hera, Sabine, they all have a lot more to tell. There's not much more to tell. Yeah, he can rescue some more of his people and bring them back, but there's not much more to tell from him. I think that when he goes, it's going to be devastating. I think they're going to be devastated. I could see a lot happening with him. So, I, I yeah, the, the episode, it was a bit of a filler, but again, 
understood why they did it, but I love the fact that you talked about um, this, they, they explored the open space and, and everything too is that Dave Filoni is very aware of the extended universe. Yes, he um, is. Has pulled yep. many times, and it gets me more excited. Let's get to this possible Old Republic stuff that they keep teasing. Let's get there. What's like he's pulled from the Old Republic before. Darth Bane has been in there. Darth Revan was supposed to be in the Clone Wars. Um, let's do it. Where like the, I would assume those episodes are probably coming in about two, three, four episodes from mm. now. But I think that we're gonna get uh, Cham Sindula. Sindula. I yesterday I said I said Sindula, and I said it kind of quick, so I got murdered on twitter <laughs> cham sindula anyway so that will happen on the next episode i think okay um by the way i think you're wrong about who's going first who do you think is going first uh, i think it's one of two characters less likely okay is sabine um i i think there's there's a bigger emotional punch with mm -hmm. sabine by the way and i agree with you there is more story to tell with her first but i don't think we're going to see our first main character go Till at least we get near the end of I this agree season with that. in that one. Yeah. But I think more likely yeah. is Chopper. They're not going to take Chopper You know out. why no I'm thinking way. Chopper? Why is that? Because I think Chopper has not caught on with the fans as much as they thought you think so? the droid would catch on with the fans. I, I really do. I really don't think... I haven't... When I talk to a lot of people about Rebels, maybe your experience has been different. Yeah. But when I talk to a lot of people about Rebels, like you talk to people about Episode 7, right. BB-8. Right. BB-8 was awesome and great. I don't get that same feeling when I talk well, to people. Chopper's a grouch. He's kind of a grouch, yeah. and it hasn't gone over with people. And I, I and look, if you told me we're gonna, we're going to do this droid, and he's going to be this type of personality, I would have said that's a good idea. So I'm cool with that. But it feels to me like it just has not caught on with the audience the way they thought. And I got a feeling he might be the first you one. Think to go. Chopper's the first to go. He might be I on the chopping think, block. I just first. Don't, <laughs> Chopper's on the chopping block. I just don't think that he's going to. I think they would be upset. I just don't think it had the emotional impact if Zeb went. I agree, but it would have less impact, I think, on their storytelling to off well, that's, that droid. Well, that's definitely you know? true. So yeah, it leaves us to see. Who, who do knows? you guys? Back? I absolutely think it's one of those three. three. I think it's either Zeb, Sabine, right. or Chopper. Hera and, and Kanan. They ain't going nowhere yet. yet. Not yet. No. Um, you guys, if you're watching Rebels, who will be the first to go? And if you're not watching our Rebels After Show, make sure that you do that. That's every Wednesday after the episode goes up. Okay, our next story. This is a bit of a bummer. So apparently that Visceral game that we keep oh, talking yes, about, this yes, stinks. Yes. Uh, apparently Visceral, the game, is a long ways away. I thought it was coming out like this year. This comes from IGN. Speaking to shareholders in EA's Q3 2016 earnings call, um, Blake Jorgensen, who is the chief financial officer over at EA, was asked how important it was to reduce less profitable or non-profitable titles in the company's portfolio. He went on to explain that the company was investing in some action-based games, which is when he revealed the release window news. We are down to less than 15 major SKUs, said Jorgensen, and that feels like a good size of the business, and we are obviously announcing that we are investing in some action-based SKUs by bringing people like Jade Raymond and Amy Henning into our organization to help build those, and those are obviously a few years out in our SKU plan. A few years out. Um, that is let's see amy Her amy henning jade raymond and the rest of the team at visceral are still hard at work at the, at the development of the game given that it won't come out for another year or two there's a good chance that the game might be tied to the han solo movie which was kind of rumored for a while yeah so, long time um another year or two i would yeah. probably say it's going to be two yeah it's going to be cool his language we said at least a, a few years yeah a two, few years especially with, at least two yeah with the development of games and how long that takes and because it'll play in to the han solo uh, it's, it, I get it. I'm just bummed because it's like I want another Star Wars game. I yeah. want another good. I want a. I want a good Star Wars game, and not, nothing against Battlefront, but I'm. Not, I haven't been. It wasn't as, as satisfying. No, as I we wasn't were locked hoping. into the story yet. Yeah. I want to be locked into a Star Wars story in the video game. I mean, for my for my work schedule, I probably don't want to be. But you know, as far <laughs> but I need to be invested again in a Star Wars game the way I was in Knights of the Republic. Yeah. And, I don't know. Are you bummed about this? You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm not. Okay. And, and here's why. I'm actually kind of, I find this refreshing. Okay. Because not just in, in Star Wars, but in the video game world, how often does this happen? That there's a game coming and a game developer says, December 2015 mm -hmm. is when this game is coming. And how often then do we get to within about two or three months? Uh, now, summer 2016. Right. Now, so they think hey, we might be able to get this out as fast as this, so let's announce that date. Then it gets pushed. I got to tell you, 
I actually feel like this is refreshing. Yeah. They know, look, this is probably ways off. I would rather them come out and tell straight up this game's a couple years away. Oh, I don't disagree with you yeah. there. Yeah. So, like, is it unfortunate yeah. that we're not getting it tomorrow? Absolutely it is. But I got to say, I, I heard the news and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm glad that I can set my expectations realistically now. From that point of view, I absolutely agree with you. I think that you're right there because I would rather them t tell me the truth when I'm going to expect. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's just I'm, I'm just bummed because, you know, I want a good Star Wars game. Yeah, because I, I don't know when we're getting another good Star no. Wars I'll be honest with you, too. Like, the Lego the, thing, you know. The Lego's always fun, yeah. but they released that mobile game. Uh, I'm, now I'm forgetting the name Uprising. of the mobile game. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I was like, I played that for like two days. I'm yeah. like, I would have given up on it after one day, but I'm like, no, it's Star Wars. I, I wanted to, to learn the story it. about and what then, happened. It was bummer. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. good. Are right, we going to skip the last story, and we're just going to go to the part of the story where we hear from you guys, and that is it's Twitter. You guys have submitted at, excuse me, hashtag Collider Jedi Council. We pick them out, and we have a couple today. The first one, this comes from George underscore Starman, who says, <laughs> what is the nerdiest thing that you've ever done for Star Wars or the nerdiest thing that you own? John? Nerdiest thing, if you want to talk about nerdiest, like in terms of how far you've gone for that object of your affection, yeah. being Star Wars in my case, I've told this story before, but when The Phantom Menace was coming out, I camped in line in a little pup tent on a sidewalk yeah. with my buddies in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada for tickets for Phantom Menace, even though I wasn't going to go see the movie there and I wasn't going to get any tickets. Right. I just wanted to participate in the camp out, and I did, but that's not even the thing. The thing is, the reason I wasn't getting tickets is because me and a couple of my friends, we were getting in a minivan, driving 1,500 miles to drive all the way back to Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, across country, two days to get there, just so I could watch The Phantom Menace in my favorite movie theater. Wow. So the camping with the two-day road trip, that is probably the nerdiest thing I've ever and done for Star Wars. You got Wars. me beat. I, I mean, I dressed up I dressed up as a Jedi for the, and walked to the, when I was in college. You know, also you know, very nerdy. Do very not nerd. underestimate very the nerdiness nerdy, of that. But I didn't do that whole, uh, that, that whole road trip and everything, too. It's amazing. As far as nerdiest thing I own, I mean, I got every single damn book. And I have, like, you know, uh, as regards to shirts. and I mean, there's so many shirts that, you, that I wear. Where the, I mean, look, I design my own damn shirt. <laughs> it's like, so, I mean, there's tons of stuff. I mean, the amount of stuff you look in, in the office here, there's tons of Star my Wars stuff. My favorite, my favorite Star Wars thing we have in the office has never been on camera. It's oh, our, that rug. our our, our, our Fro Han uh, Solo Frozen and Carbonite rug yeah. we've got out, out there. This is my favorite thing we got. Okay, next one. This is from at Jedi SAS. Do you think them adding more screen time to the new leads for episode eight? means that it will take time away from the original trilogy characters. Uh, no, because there's one less. A significant one less. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I, I, but I don't think Leia is going to get much time. I think you're going to get more time from Leia in Claudia Gray's novel because yeah. Carrie Fisher just isn't isn't the actress she once was. She just isn't. Her heart's yeah. not in it. But and you just, know what? She'll be the first one to tell you that, too. Yeah, and that course. doesn't bother her. Of course. And she'll she'll be in the movie, yep. and she'll have a role, and she'll have a pretty big role. Luke's going to have a big part. I uh, Yes, You're totally not cutting agree. time away from Luke in this one. You can't, because it, it, you, the, fans, the fans can accept showing him in that last shot because the whole movie is about where the hell is he. Yeah. They will not accept... No. Yeah. You, you no. Just, no. You cannot do it you again. Can't. You nope. can't cut Luke down. So I don't have. I don't think that I, I'm glad they're adding some more to the new leads. But we're good. Yeah, and that's not to say that we think the next movie has to be about Luke. No, no, no. But he, you cannot just have him five minutes of screen time in this movie. He has to be a significant player in the film. Keep the focus on Ray. Keep the focus on Poe and on Finn and uh, Hux and on Kylo. All that kind of stuff. Yes, but you have to create a, sp a specific and significant role for Luke in this yeah. film because fans are not going to accept otherwise. Agreed. Okay, next one, at Dusty Pearson. After hearing the Boba Fett Rogue One rumors, I think it would be awesome if he actually was helping the Rebels. Thoughts? Well, we spoke about this a little earlier. Yeah, too. again, you want me to rescue that cat? Pay me. You want me to kill that cat? Right. Pay me. Either way's good. Now listen, it is very possible that Forrest Whitaker is a bounty hunter and Darth Vader hires Boba Fett to hunt them down. Yep. And hire, uh, it, it, you know, so it's very possible that Boba Fett is working for the Empire again as well, too, because it him could and be Vader this Rogue One person 
that if it's a person, it could be this rogue one person is notorious amongst the, amongst the Empire for right. being one of the, the more influential rebels. And, and Boba Fett's been hired to find that one rebel, that rogue one, yep. and take them out. So it could be on the other side. I would actually love to see Vader and Boba Fett working together again because be it, also, it would also make sense to episode five. Yeah. Like, you know, because when he's working with them and, and they seem familiar account. with each other. Yeah. And in the comics, you, you see him working together. So I would prefer to see Vader working with Boba Fett. Okay, at Kyle Lau Ren, <laughs> do you think we'll get anything on the Knights of Ren before episode eight in books or comic form? Maybe uh, before episode eight. Yeah, I do. I do. Now, whether or not it's a comic book or a book, I don't know. But I certainly think that it's a possibility. It gets they get mentioned in Claudia Gray's novel. I think it's a possibility. Depending on where Ben Solo is, it was kind of it was kind of hinted that they hadn't seen him in a very long time. Now, yeah. whether or not that's six years or it was ten years, however long it was, if it was if it was ten years, then in that six year, you might hear about the Knights of Ren in that book. You might hear about them later on the line because we're going to get more books this year i mean we only know about two so far that yeah. are coming out but we're going to get more books so it's very possible i i'm, I'm interested I, I i don't know where that's going to show up but it's possible pure guess here no nothing at all won't. The, and the, the only reason i don't think they will is because i really think they i think and again pure speculation i'm basing this on nothing I think they want to do those introductions in the movies. I think they want our first glimpse into what is this mysterious Knights of Ren. So maybe throw us. it more in episode eight and then have something about them and in after then, eight. Yes, more yeah. novels and I stuff see that. after that. So yeah. I, I kind of feel like they're going to do it that I way. Don't, I don't <clears throat> see that being uh, crazy. I think that's absolutely possible that they set it up, give you a little bit more, because who knows who Benicio Del Toro is or how much more we're going to see of the Knights of Ren yeah. with snow. Can you want to give you a little bit more depth and then tell us more about them? So that's definitely possible. All right, last question. This is from <clears throat> at Nick Mitford. Greetings from Belfast. What are the council's thoughts on a Kylo Ren anthology film to flesh out the story of Ben to Ren? Um, I love the idea of a Kylo it's like a Ren. 90s pop group. Yeah, Ben, ben to Ren. Ren. I love the idea of a Kylo Ren anthology film because what it does is it sets, it gives me a little bit more of the Marvel feels where like Captain America, Winter Soldier, and a Kylo Ren story with Adam Driver in hell know whether or not that's in the in between uh episode seven and eight if it's before the, the events of episode seven i think it could be interesting and i think that it also it's finally we're entrusting some more of these characters that are introduced in episode seven now i don't know if it if this means again after episode nine comes out that we get a kylo ren story we also don't know what the rest of kylo ren's story is so it's hard to say whether or not we're going to get an anthology film because we don't know what happens to him. Now, it's not going to happen this year. That's the only mm -hmm. time I would like, okay, we'll see the events of what happened before or after. We're going to learn so much more about him in the next four years. So I'd love to see it right now, but I don't know if my opinion will change. Dumb idea. All the way, huh? Dumb idea Why? all the way. Why? Can you follow me here. Let's do a movie about this character we already know, and we know, we know where they're going. Let's do about this character, and he's born as a young child, born with a destiny born with the power of the Force, and we get to sit back and watch his story unfold, leading towards that dark destiny that we know he's destined for. Does that sound familiar? Have we not seen that already? But that's, that, that's need... you're, you're talking about that. Well, you're it's not a talking... different character. But, but... No, 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 but you're not talking, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what about an adventure that Kylo Ren's having in between seven and eight, let's say, let's say episode eight takes Takes four but that's not years. really an anthology film. Sure that's kind of would see. Okay, if, well, okay. Look, if, if that's what the if that's what the viewer's asking about a solo story, he's uh, saying, no he pun is intended. saying Ben to Ren though. He, he from yeah. where you're going, you're you're like you're right. We don't need to see the dark. We Vader don't story need another again. falling to no, the dark. No, but side what story. I'm what I'm proposing is maybe seeing something more like because remember those the, again the the, um, the legend story now. But when Vader and and Prince Zizor, uh, you know, right, like that type of stuff, like missions that he was going on for for Snoke and doing stuff and just like a one off on a Kylo Ren doing some dark stuff. I'd be up for that. Yeah. Now, if you're talking like after episode eight, yeah, to see then something Kylo has to go off and do that is connected. That's kind of what to I'm think about, yeah. to nine. Yeah, that has more. That tastes better in my yeah. mouth than the other thing does. Like, right. I would still question because then is it really an anthology film per se? Because if it is connective tissue between eight and nine, and it's there in the middle, then it's 
kind of 8.5. Well, you could say the same thing about Rogue One. Because Rogue One... But at least Rogue One is jumping out of the story you're in back 30 years ago. This one, if this happens... But it connects to four. It does connect to four, but if you've got this... If you got eight and then nine, which is in the proper right, timeline, right. sorry, and, and then you have uh, you have a Kylo Ren story that's in between them in that same timeline, it kind of would it feel does, like an 8.5. It, it, it is like thread. That doesn't mean I wouldn't be interested in seeing it, right. though. Right, it, it, it's tricky, but who the hell knows? Um, okay, that's our episode today of Collider Jedi Council. Short episode, but like I said, short, sweet. Got some cool stuff out today. I'd like to thank Obi Obi-Wan, I was going to call you. Obi-John Kenobi. <laughs> John can't be a John. Where can the good people find Obi -Wan. you? Obi-Wan. No. All right. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and on Twitter simply by following me at John Campia. And keep your eyes open. We're about to make an announcement here pretty soon about the release date for my book, The Pride. Keep your eyes open for that. It will be coming soon. You know, we said that Obi-Wan thing. I forgot to totally even mention this, was that when I was getting on the plane to Sundance, Ewan McGregor was standing right in front of me getting on my plane. No, I have really? A, I took That's a picture awesome. because I didn't want to bother him. So I took a, I took, he's like, he had like a, the, the, the little derby on and I took a picture from behind him and I sent it to some people and I was like, Obi-Wan, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, well, that's him, like you weirdo. Um, so anyway, you, you want to see that picture, it's on my Instagram. But you want to find Instagram, at Christian Harloff, at <laughs> Twitter, that's where you can find me. And make sure that you guys hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Get your, try to get your, some of your questions on the air here. Make sure you tune in every Thursday. Uh, like this. Tell your friends about it. If they're Star Wars fans, let them know that we're talking Star Wars here every week. Thank you very much. May the Force be with you. Always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.